Hello everyone, I hope that you are enjoying your Monday. I am currently in the process of prepping for the next episode, so bear with me, fresh content will be coming. Um, I'm working on that currently, but part of the prep process is me basically just scouring the internet to see what's going on in the world of politics. And since I am online and I am looking for things to cover, it is very likely that I will be sidetracked. And certainly that happened this week. And as you can kind of see here, I've got a Steven Crowder tweet up and he's been in a little bit of hot water lately, if you uh, haven't noticed. So Vox journalist Carlos Maza posted basically a year or two's worth of um, content of him basically just hurling middle school level insults at him. He's criticizing Carlos Maza, not necessarily because, you know, he's a Vox journalist who puts out bad content, and he's criticizing the content itself. No, what Steven Crowder is doing is critiquing him because he's a lispy gay guy. That is what he's doing, and as uh, Carlos shows here, you know, it led to him being doxxed, debate Steven Crowder by all of his homophobic fans, and it's just, you know, it's ridiculous. I actually, I'm relatively mixed when it comes to Vox. However, Carlos Maza is kind of the exception. If you don't like Vox, you should like Carlos Maza because he actually is an objective journalist. He puts in a lot of research and effort into his videos. So for this to happen to him, I mean, it, nobody deserves this, right? But of all people, he really doesn't deserve this level of scrutiny. And if you're going to criticize him or debunk him, then you need to criticize him because of the content, but what Steven Crowder is doing here is just being a dickhead to him and criticizing him because he's a <laughs> queer. Now it could be a tranny, Your Honor. But how many lispy, angry sprites and Vox sachet across your screen and try and tell you otherwise? Or you, by the way, the gay Mexican guy. The gay Latino V-neck. Gay Mexican. Or Mexican gay guy used to work. Mexican oh, gay oh, Latino oh, there oh, at, uh, oh, at Vox. Oh, uh, gay Latino from Vox. The token Vox gay atheist sprite with surprisingly, surprisingly flaccid chest considering how thin he is. It is it's very bizarre to me. Uh, oh. Ad hominem, yes, but it was an addendum to fat. So ridiculous. So, I mean, this is what we, uh, and I didn't even get to all of it, you know. I mean, he just, so much content of him lobbing these ad hominem attacks. Just, it's so childish. Like, this is literally middle school level insults. But, you know, on top of that, we have him making this stupid point. Remind me how is one's preference in sexual friction a point of pride? Now, I don't know what sexual friction means. I'm assuming that he means like sexual preference. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this is um, one, because Steven Crowder is a gigantic, hateful asshole. And second of all, he's bringing up a point that I often see during Pride. You know, there's always this, well, what about straight Pride? Like you see it all the time, right? And I feel the need to respond because it's such an obnoxious point to make. It's just people who, they make this point because they don't like that gay people are trying to be happy and trying to celebrate. So they'll bring up points like straight pride, or they'll say, you know, why are you, uh, why are you prideful about the fact that you're attracted to men? Well, wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have to be prideful of that fact? Because, you know, this is something that shouldn't really be an issue. But because of people like you, Steven Crowder, you make it an issue. You make it so pride is a necessity. And it's funny because, like, as a gay man myself, and I hate to say as a gay man, but I mean, really, every time Pride rolls around, I become less and less excited and I get a little bit more anxious because it's not like I'm prideful. Like, I, I don't, I'm prideful as an individual, but what I see is just a reminder that people in America, they still really fucking hate gay people. And I'm not gonna lie, it is, uh, it's pretty soul crushing. And I'm reminded constantly, like you see these brands like large multinational corporations, like for example, Xbox, you know, they'll change their logo. They'll make the Xbox logo rainbowified and say, play with pride. And, you know, I would much prefer that they treat their LGBTQ employees and all of their employees with dignity, pay them a livable wage, give them health care. But that's besides the point. What always bugs me is the horrible comments that you see in response to these posts. You know, um, I saw Xbox's post on Facebook and they said something about pride or they just updated their logo and underneath were a bunch of responses by a bunch of pricks basically shitting on gay people. Uh, the Bible says Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Wow, that's brilliant. 
Why didn't anybody tell me this before I came out of the closet? Because it would have saved my family a lot of headache. If you just told me that God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, I would have not been gay. Brilliant. So it's just, we see a lot of reminders as gay people when we're supposed to be prideful or celebrating who we are in identity that is demonized that we're still really fucking hated. Um, so remind me, how is one's preference in sexual friction a point of pride? Well, this was my response. Because bullies like you belittle and dehumanize gay people to the point where they feel worthless and want to end their lives. Pride is them pushing back against goons like you, acknowledging their worth as human beings and trying to feel proud about what they deem icky. So as someone who, like I never participate in the festivities, I'm someone who, I don't like to be in large crowds of people. I've never attended a gay pride parade. I am basically a nerd who likes to stay at home and smoke weed and play video games. But with that being said, is pride a necessity? Absolutely it's needed, absolutely. Because every single day, if you are a gay person, there's some reminder that you are the other, you're icky, and a lot of gay people, myself included, like we go out of our way to censor ourselves in order to accommodate possible homophobic feelings that individuals have. Like for me, in order to avoid any bullshit or even any reaction whatsoever, sometimes I'll just censor myself and not mention my husband in the conversation just to make sure that they're, you know, um, they don't feel uncomfortable or that I get any response. Because really, I mean, the point that Crowder is making here about, well, why is this such a point of pride? In an ideal world, that would be the case, right? Like nobody cares that somebody is gay. I mentioned my husband and it's just, it doesn't register, right? It's just like you mentioned your wife or your partner of the opposite gender in the event you're a straight person. But that's not the world that we're living in. So this is why these identities need to be celebrated. Not because... You know, people want to flaunt, quote unquote, flaunt their sexual orientation. We have to celebrate this because we live in a world where pieces of shit like you, Steven Crowder, make gay people feel so terrible about themselves that they want to commit suicide. So when we celebrate Pride Month, what we're trying to do is remind gay people that, hey, you're worth it. Your life is meaningful in spite of all the noise, in spite of people like Steven Crowder who want you to feel like shit. I mean, look at... If you go to his banner here, it's literally him advertising his t-shirt that says socialism is for fags. He literally has the nerve to put a fucking gay slur on his shirt. But then I love how he's trying to be edgy, but at the same time he censors it. Just put fags on your shirt. Don't be a pussy. Call us faggots if that's what you want to call us. Because we know that that's the way you feel, you piece of shit. So call us faggots. And maybe I'm getting a little bit too ranty here, but it's just irritating. Like, every single time, or almost every time, certainly, I haven't seen it this year, but... Whenever Pride Month starts, you see straight pride trending. And it's it's irritating to, to me, you know? Um, like, it reminds me of, like, the scene from The Office where, I don't know if you remember, when Phyllis and Bob Vance were getting married and Michael Scott was trying to do everything he could to in insert himself in the event. That's basically the equivalent when you invoke straight pride when gays are trying to celebrate. It's not that you shouldn't feel prideful, if you're straight. It's that we don't really get that much of an opportunity to celebrate our identities without feeling uncomfortable or trying to accommodate someone who may or may not be homophobic. But every single day of the year is straight pride. You never have to worry about making somebody feel uncomfortable if you reveal that you're straight. It's just something that you don't think about. So in an ideal world, Steven Crowder, I would love for you know, us to not have to worry about pride or feel prideful, but because of people like you, this is why we have pride parades, and this is why we celebrate pride, so gay people don't feel horrible about their identities. But that's not the world that we live in. And, you know, speaking as a gay person, like, I'm in such a privileged position compared to trans people. Like the Hodge twins, I don't know if you know them, they're other big YouTubers, they put out basically a two-minute rant just talking about how horrible and icky trans people are. So we have people like you, Stephen, who traffic in hate. You monetize this hate, make money off of it. And that's why we have to go to such great lengths to celebrate pride. But even when we're supposed to be celebrating, we're still hit with these reminders that, hey, I fucking hate you if you're gay. That's what we see in these comments, you know, on the... Uh, on the Xbox page and whatever, McDonald's, whatever large multinational corporation advertises, whenever you see it, there's always this response. And it's so irritating. And I, I think it's genuinely because a lot of people 
They just don't know that this is why pride is needed. It's needed because we need to remind gay people that they're not the other, that they're not less than, that they're not icky, that they are human beings and their lives are meaningful. Their lives are worthwhile and they shouldn't hurt themselves. They shouldn't end their lives. They need to celebrate who they are because each individual life is absolutely a beautiful thing. The fact that we exist is a wonderful thing. We have short lives, you know, uh, celebrate who you are because we all are, you know, we all are susceptible to hatred or whatnot, but it's, it's targeted at specific groups and gay people and especially trans people have been targets. They've been targets. So it's just, this irritated me. And, you know, I went on my little rant because it's like, really, you're going to complain now about gay people who are celebrating. Can you just give them like this, let them celebrate pride. You shit on them like all the time. So you can't give them like this one fucking month to celebrate. And really it's just like the weekend, like the kickoff weekend is the big thing. I mean, you, you sell t-shirts with a gay slur on it. You can't just give people who are gay, like a little bit of time to celebrate after you make them feel like shit for the year. And it's funny because he goes on to play the victim. If you look at some of his other tweets here, um, he was basically talking about how, oh, well, you know, Vox wants to uh, get my channel deleted. And it's because Carlos Maza had called for him to be deplatformed. Now, I don't know that I would agree with something like that, but certainly um, it does irritate me that like you have someone like David Dole who puts out phenomenal content. Every video he produces is well researched. It's produced fantastically. And like there's a 50% chance that one of David Dole's videos will be, will be demonetized. But then you have people like Steven Crowder who puts out this hateful content that makes people feel like shit and he monetizes it. He's literally profiting off of middle school insults that he is hurling towards gay people. And this is what passes as comedy in conservative circles. This is him being edgy, selling a shirt that says, socialism is for fags. Wow, that is fucking edgy. And I already know the response. You triggered liberal? You triggered? You triggered lib? <laughs> like, conservatives are such one trick ponies. You know, they, they don't, they don't, they don't like to be called out on their bullshit, and then when they are, then they immediately play the victim. Like, there's this conservative persecution complex, uh, you know, spe especially within the Christian community, that evangelical portion of conservatives. They love to play the victim. They love it. And another response is um, from Michael Knowles. This is something that Steven Crowder retweeted. Um, he said, what do you think the Q stands for? Because um, somebody said, the fact that you call Steven Crowder, a guy older than 12, who constantly calls a gay man, gay men queers, a prominent conservative is the per perfect encapsulation of modern conservatives. A fucking joke. And yeah, he uses queer. He uses it in a very like demeaning way. And then Michael Knowles responds by saying, well, what do you think the Q stands for in LGBTQ? Well, it stands for queer questioning. But here's the thing, dipshit, uh, Michael Knowles, context matters. And this was my response to that. When gay people call each other queers, it's a term of endearment. And even when straight allies refer to gay people as queers, they say queer rights or the queer community, they're not doing it to me to be hateful. But when people who hate us use the word queer as an insult, well, it's, it's demeaning, right? Older gay people, I'm assuming, are especially sensitive because growing up, that word was just used to hurt people, right? And um, for me, it was kind of 50-50. I was called a queer as a kid because I was pretty girly and effeminate. Um, so it just depends on the context. Now, I'm not here to language police anyone. I'm not here to say, hey, guys, let's ban the word queer. But all I'm saying is that, you know, you, everything that you say and do, actions have consequences, so you don't get to say, oh, well, you know, I'm just doing what gay people are doing when you're literally trying to get our rights undone. What progress we've made, you're trying to get that undone and you're fighting to stop further progress. So you don't get to say, oh, well, they say queer, so it's okay for me to say it and I'm definitely not an asshole who hates gay people. No, fuck you. Fuck you. You're an asshole. You're basically a middle school bully. And now Steven Crowder is trying to play the victim. Unbelievable. 
But this video, it's not necessarily about Steven Crowder. It's just basically me saying, look, whenever you get irritated by the fact that gay people have the audacity to feel prideful one month out of the entire fucking year, maybe just like don't shit on them. Maybe give them a little bit of a break. Maybe refrain from talking about how irritated you are that they're quote unquote flaunting their sexuality because it's desperately needed. It's desperately needed. But Steven Crowder doesn't care. Um, during the Trans Day of Remembrance, he took the time to shit on trans people. So this is just a bad person. And it, even a conservative like Blair White gets it. The point is acknowledging, celebrating freedom. And the fact that even being suspected of being anything but straight is a death sentence by the government in many countries still. It's not about sexual friction. And I think you know that. That's a shallow observation. And look, I think that Steven Crowder does know that. He just doesn't care because his audience is probably, if I had to guess, it's largely like 12-year-olds, 14-year-olds. So this type of like edgy humor where you just basically make fun of someone for being gay and call them lispy queers, like that passes as comedy. But I think he knows better. He just doesn't care. And he wants gay people to feel like shit. Because one, he's a bad person, and two, you know, he uh, he gets to monetize that and profit off of it and uh, sell socialism is for fags. So that's my two cents. Just a little bit of a rant because this shit is, it just gets on my nerves, right? I don't like to invoke as a gay man very frequently, but, you know, it's just, it's irritating to see this. Every fucking year that Pride happens, there's always this response where straight pride is trending. Look, I don't give a fuck if you want to feel prideful that you're straight. Of course you should feel prideful about your identity. Who gives a fuck? But the point is, like, you're not beaten over the head with how disgusting your straight identity is, right? If you're holding hands with your wife, Stephen, you're not, you're not being called a breeder by people driving down the street in their cars. Like... That's not a thing. Like, so being prideful is important for gay people because they're marginalized, because they're under attack. And look, I'm fine. This isn't about me. But there are people who feel very vulnerable because of their identity. They're ashamed and embarrassed about the fact that they're gay. And it's because of dickheads like you, Stephen. So I'll leave that there because um, I'm just going to ramble at this point. And I just wanted to throw my two cents in. This is irritating me. If you see gay people celebrating and you don't like that... Just shut the fuck up for like a little bit. Give them this. Let them have this one month, baby. Don't be a dickhead.